So my lovely bushes, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a breakdown for Kid Goku, aka Goku GT. He is the tiniest character in the entire game, and with such a small size, this guy has incredible mobility, and he can also dish out a ton of damage if he's got the meter to spend. But to understand this character better, we gotta first talk about some of his unusual normals. Does it have a low down light? Yes, it does. It is short, but that's expected out of such a small character. In the air, he does not have a jumping down heavy launcher like all the other Gokus. His jumping 2H is a knockdown, similar to Frieza's or Fuse Zamasu's. This makes Goku's combo routes a bit unconventional and maybe a scary character when you first pick him up. But he's got other normals that make up for this. Besides, his jumping down heavy can give you a sliding knockdown even after a vanish, so it's a really good tool. And he does need it for knocking the opponent back down into the ground, because his jumping heavy attack does not do it. It just kicks the opponent forward, a bit like Android 21. This makes it so you cannot end combos with a simple heavy attack, you gotta do the 2H. But it also means that, especially in the corner, you can always fit an extra heavy attack for bonus damage. Finally, the special attack button doesn't throw the usual key blasts, instead, you can think of this as the power pull button for kids. Goku. Goku spins his power pole and then extends it to hit the opponent. Both on the ground and in the air, this causes a launcher and is an essential tool for Kid Goku's combos. And of course, it takes up quite a bit of the stage, so you can always try to catch an unaware opponent. And if you press down in a special button, you get different stuff with the power pole, whether you're in the air or on the ground. On the ground, Goku stabs your opponent's toes with his power pole and uses it to launch himself into the air. This hits low and you can cancel this move at any time into any special move or another Another power pole attack or any heavy attack. So this is going to be very useful for block strings and pressure, because you can cancel this move while it's still on the ground into anything else, or right after you leave the ground you can go for some overhead options, so you can get very tricky with it. In the air if you press down in the special button, Goku dives with his power pole first, and then he hops a little bit and lands. During the hop you can air dash and you can also select the direction in which he hops, if you want to hop forward or backwards. It's sort of a fast ascent move for Goku, but unlike adult Gohans you can't really do this immediately after a combo, so its uses will be very different. Moving on to his special attacks, all of his special attacks can be done in the air or on the ground. Every single one of them, air or ground, does not matter, and honestly, that's part of what makes this character so much fun to play. First up, we have the iconic Kamehameha with quarter circle forward and the special button. Goku shoots this beam that is always tilted. If you do it on the ground, he will tilt it upwards. If you do it in the air, he will tilt it downwards. It's a bit like Cell's Kamehameha, though in my opinion, this one has a much better angle, it's more horizontal so it catches more of the screen, and while on the ground you can also hold the button to run with a Kamehameha, and Goku sprints pretty fast. You can change the direction to run forward and back, and if you have any assists, this could be a way for you to just win the neutral. The Kamehameha is also Goku's assist, it's a beam assist, like everyone wanted, but it's a tilted beam assist, so not everyone wanted that. In my opinion, it is obviously a bit different, but I think that makes the character more unique. It still covers a lot of the screen, if your opponent likes jumping I'd say this is even better than your regular beam assist. The one thing that makes me not like it as much is combos, because this is not gonna let you finish with that beam assist into Dragon Rush, you know, like for characters like Android 16 who really like finishing their combos like that. So if you're running a beam assist on your team right now, this might not be a direct replacement. But with a few adjustments, you could still fit your team, for sure. Next up, we have the reverse Kamehameha with quarter circle backwards and the special button. And this ability is nuts. Goku will propel himself forward and hit the opponent with his head. You can control his direction, so you can go horizontal, diagonal, and you can even move forward or back. You have full directional control over this ability. Plus, you can link multiple of these together by simply tapping the direction you want to go and the special button. You can link three of these moves together while you're in the air. So you can go up, down, you can go forward or back three times before you land. This move does have a bit of landing recovery, so it can be punished, but it also has very good priority. It can beat super dashes and other special moves. It does not beat key blasts or beams, but it's a great mobility tool for Kid Goku. Very good for getting in and starting your own pressure. You can also shoot his regular Kamehameha if you just tap the special button without any direction, and this counts as one of the three moves that you can string together. So you could go horizontal, up and Kamehameha, for instance. But if you go horizontal, up and down, that's already the three moves and the Kamehameha won't happen. This is one of the best abilities in the game for getting out of the corner as well, and it's really fun to put it into combos. It gives you a lot of style points. Moving on to the attack button specials. Dragon Flurry Fist with quarter circle forward and an attack button. It's a charge attack, a lariat type move. The different buttons have different ranges, and if it's blocked, the charge is all that happens. It's good for getting in close, you can use 
a charge into assist similar to how Bardock uses the Lariat into assist to win the neutral. If it hits, it has different effects depending on the button that you pressed. The light attack button throws a key blast after the charge. The medium attack version has a flurry of attacks and causes a wall bounce. And this is used in a lot of Goku's corner combos. And then the heavy attack version with one bar of meter behaves very similar to the medium attack version, but has a faster startup. A thing to note about this move is that you cannot call assists before it begins. If you call a long assist, like Kid Buu for instance, before doing this move, he will go away as soon as the animation begins. You also cannot call assists during the attack animation, you can only call them once the attack is pretty much over. Which means that some assists with long startups, like again Kid Buu and Gotenks, are not going to help Goku in these combo routes. And our last special attack is the Dragon Flash Fist with quarter circle back and an attack button. This is a combo finisher and a go-to mix-up tool. Goku jumps forward and blasts the opponent with this big key ball. The distance he jumps changes depending on the attack button, with a heavy attack version traveling full screen. Because Goku jumps, you can air dash before you even land. So if you cover this with an assist, it makes for a very easy mix-up tool. And with the light attack version, you can make it gapless with pretty much any assist in the game. If it lands, it knocks the opponent down. The light attack version is a fast knockdown. The medium attack version and heavy attack versions give you a bounce and sliding knockdown, making this a great tool for finishing combos. From the mid-screen, it does leave the opponent very far from you, so it's bad for your next combo, your next pressure. So in these situations, you might as well finish your combos with a jumping 2H. But if you're in the corner, this is the best tool to finish a combo without spending any meter. And it also works from a Vanish combo, so there you go. Next, we're talking about supers. He's got a level 1 and 2 level 3s. His level 1 is the only move that can only be done on the ground and not in the air. It is the Super Kamehameha with quarter circle forward and the right bumper or trigger. Goku goes Super Saiyan and shoots a horizontal beam attack. Very similar to Super Saiyan Goku's level 1 super, however, this one cannot be tilted up. If someone on your team has already died, Goku will turn Super Saiyan 3 instead of the regular Super Saiyan, and this super gains a damage boost of around 400 damage if done raw and 100 damage scaled. His standard level 3 is the Dragon Fist Explosion with quarter circle backwards and the right bumper. Goku powers up and lunges forward and kicks the opponent. If blocked, that's it for the super. If this connects, though, you will get this whole animation playing out. And once again, if at least one of your teammates is dead, Goku will transform this time into Super Saiyan 4. And you're gonna get a damage boost of around 800 damage raw and 200 damage scaled. Both versions also side switch, but they give you great pressure. So if you want to try to cross up on Wake Up to keep that corner, you can totally do that. Goku's final level 3 is the Super Ultra Spirit Bomb with quarter circle backwards and the right trigger. This Spirit Bomb is a lot faster than base Goku's, and this time you can move before it even is done exploding. Goku can combo into the Spirit Bomb by himself, and since he can move after the Spirit Bomb is done, he can also combo after it. This is part of what makes Kid Goku devastating stating when he has the meter, because he can just spend as much as he wants. If he has enough, he has a few touch of deaths without even using Sparking Blast. So I definitely recommend practicing a few, especially because comboing into your own Spirit Bomb is the only way to land it reliably, because if Kid Goku is in the bench, his DHC is actually the Dragon Fist Explosion and not the Spirit Bomb. You can also use it reacting to a Super Dash. It's fun seeing your opponent Super Dashing straight into the Spirit Bomb. But other than that, practice comboing into your own Spirit Bomb. As far as auto combos go, when you mash the light attack button, he does this. A couple of notes on his auto combo, the second hit vacuums a little bit, meaning it corrects the opponent's position, making it easier to confirm combos. The third hit is an unblockable grab, and that's always scary in mix-up situations. And as you can see, it side switches, so it's something you might want to use after a vanish, for instance, in case you're close to the corner. And when you mash the medium attack button, he does this. And now that we know his moves, here are some tips on how to use them. One of the questions I get very often is, what is this character's best position? Should he be a point character, a mid, an anchor? And I think mid is the obvious first answer for Goku. His supers get stronger as your team dies, and the fact that he can combo after his spirit bomb means he deals a lot of damage, but only if he has the meter, and the first character doesn't always have the meter. This is clearly encouraging you not to play him first, but also with the current tech, I think he needs at least one assist to be viable. He's got some good mix-up 
options, but they are either punishable or you will just lose your turn. On the ground, you can do 2S into overhead options, but this can be punished by a down heavy. And his Dragon Flash Fist is so good with an assist. Look, Goku is tiny. He hides really well behind bigger assists. He's so hard to see. But if he's going at it solo, I mean, he seems to be capable, but he's just a lot better with one assist. That said, it is still early, and as new tech gets discovered, maybe the anchor position starts being a bit more appealing. As you've noticed, Goku also has a lot of tools for winning the neutral. He's got the EX Dragon Flash Fist, he can run with a Kamehameha, and of course reverse Kamehameha shenanigans. However, without assists, these tools will make you lose your turn. They are safe on block, but unless you cover their gaps with an assist, the one who will be blocking is you, which is another argument for having at least one assist in the bench when playing Kid Goku. Either way, you'll start with him on the bench, so make sure you get some good use out of his assist. A lot of players jump around in fighters, and that's just the best case scenario for this little guy. Shoot that Kamehameha, you win the neutral easy. And then, once you have him on the battlefield, make the best use of your positioning and your meter. Getting a character in the corner with Goku is very, very easy, because his combos travel a lot. So from the mid-screen, you can corner an opponent easily. I'll give you a starter combo for trying out the character, but down the line, I recommend you guys research more optimal stuff. For now, you can do this one from the mid-screen. Your level 3 side switches, if you want to throw that at the end there, you will get good pressure, good OK out of this level 3, but you will lose the corner. And sometimes you might not want to do that because this kid is just devastating in the corner. Here's an example of a corner combo. <laughs> If you get this down, then you can start practicing extending with assists. If you have meter and you want to combo into your own spirit bomb, you go vanish, reverse Kamehameha horizontally and then diagonally back. You gotta cancel into spirit bomb very, very fast from here. And then once the spirit bomb connects, dragon rush, flash flurry fist, and then you either throw another super, or another level three or level ones with the whole team. And yeah, that's damage. And that's also the breakdown. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a thing or two. If you came here wondering if he's worth the money, I'd say he's gonna feel very weird at first, but he's definitely a lot of fun. He's probably the most fun I've had with the DLC character so far. If you enjoyed the video, consider going premium. Without premium members, I wouldn't be able to make these types of videos. I'd be making simpler videos without as much editing, but thanks to your support, I can do these breakdowns. These videos that require a lot more research and editing time. Without premium bushes, this channel would be completely different. So if you like these types of videos, consider supporting the channel through Patreon or by clicking that join button below the video. But as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globcoop, and I'll see you guys next time. Boy.